you know, we're talking about someone who was black ops, really, you know, was in between the CIA and the FBI for many years undercover in the mafia, the Italian mafia, and later to go on to um, into the Russian mafia and be aligned with some unbelievable figures of the day. But the plot doesn't stop there. It thickens greatly with this next unbelievable guest because his father was actually a made man and a carpo in the mafia. And he grew up amongst this life. This is an unbelievable reveal, guys. Coming next. Here's a here's the thing. Let me come in and you know, here's the thing there. That's fascinating, by the way, you know, the you know, the intrigue of it all and this stuff goes on every day of the week, every week of the year, every yeah. every every month, every year, right? And it's yeah. it's it's very underground, even more underground and more candlestein than the mafia, right? Yes. A lot of these yeah. things that are intertwined and the arms dealing and wars and all this stuff. But here's a question. So if you're you're contracting for the CIA, you're contracting for the FBI. So, you know, are they running you towards Putin? I mean, these guys are really clever, especially Putin. You, you know, they know who they're dealing with, right? Yeah, so but here's what they was doing. It's not working between, between these forces, right? Yeah, yeah, the thing is what I was always told is just keep your ears open. They really didn't want me talking. Both sides. They, they would say, keep your ears open. But I, I have a big mouth. I'm, I'm, I'm one of these people that I'm going to speak. And that, that was so it was hard. So I was, in fact, one FBI agent called me a rogue. He says, you're a rogue elephant. You like to deal, with, you know, on your own. I said, George, yes, I do. Because if I, if I have somebody else out in front of me, you're going to compromise me. And I can't do that. If you want me, then let's do it this way. Otherwise, I can't do it. And eventually, I left the Bureau after that. And I was dealing with Russian mafia, which is a dangerous, dangerous thing. Tell us, yeah, we was gonna, we was gonna get there with that. So, but let's go back and let's go back a little bit to the Putin administration. So, what was the goal there? What was your goal? Like, you know, I'm sure these strategies they they they, they develop. But what what was your role there? What was you what was you doing? If you could speak about it. Well, my, my uh, some stuff I could speak about, some I can. It wasn't, uh, you know, I'm never look. I never was involved in looking for intelligence or things of that nature. That was never my role. I was interested in going after the Russian mafia and arms smuggling. Yeah, that was big. I knew of a lot of arms smuggling coming out of uh, that was being handled via Eastern Europe to Al Qaeda and other groups, and that, I, I was really after a lot of that. But in order to do that, you have to have friends. You have to have friends on the inside. You just can't, uh, you know, listen and, and just, you have to have friends on the inside that, you're, that are willing to talk. I had some Palestinian Liberation Organization officials that were working with me. I had some good PLO people and they were eventually, you know, put down. I had different people working with me. Uh, and so you're learning, you have to have allies. You just don't go into this business and you're all alone or you put on a disguise. That's a lot of garbage. Anybody puts out a, does a, you know, what I seen that with one guy that was outside there or caught in Moscow, yeah, that's not how you operate. You operate, you don't operate in the shadows, you operate in the sunlight. So you would have lost some people along the way, I'm guessing. Uh, good people who was compromised and it didn't go well for them. No, I never put anybody in jeopardy. No, I'm not talking about you, but you would have, you know, friends. You've yeah, been there's someone that, I, 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 what, what I've been told is some of those PLO people were, it didn't go well for them in Belarus. That's what I was told. Michael, I'll use his name. I understand, he, you know, this was as of a couple of years ago that he was put in jail. One of my, you know, I've lost my sources there. I still have a couple. The ambassador was close to be a, uh, uh, and you see what happened to him. He's out. Valery Sapkalo. You know, Valery Sapkalo was in Belarus, and now he's on the run. 
you know, Lukashenko crapped down on everybody. And in Russia, I mean, I, you know, but Timothy Borden's still probably involved. He was a friend. Uh, Alexander Or Orlov was close to Putin. He was a friend. He probably, I hope he still is. You know, they were they were good friends of mine. And you know, we talked honestly. I mean, we really talk from the heart. When you talk, when you're talking with somebody, you better be what's right. Don't talk about what's wrong to get secrets out of them. You don't want to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, you know, there's been so much, you know, especially in later years, you know, about that oligarch system, about how a lot of oligarchs have been dethroned, they've moved. There's, you know, there's yeah. things, things are things are changing uh, there and that structure that was put together there by the resort you know the russian resources and so forth so on the back of that i want to talk about the russian mafia what was your dealings with them and uh what happened there how did you uh, start to infiltrate this this well, of organized crime this came through a uh i'll bet you his name is uh igor you know this igor introduced me to a lot of them he uh would actually go around. He had some sort of security badge that he would use when he was in Russia so he couldn't be questioned. But he, he introduced me to a lot of them. And eventually I would spend the night and we were sleeping at uh, somebody's house uh, not far from Stadi Arbat, this, the, the old, you know, Arbat area. And uh, it was a beautiful apartment. You know, we, we were still under construction, so we we slept on mattresses on the floor. But it was very nice that they treated us nice. We'd go to clubs where the drinks were so outrageous. I mean, you could never afford it. None of us could afford it. And But the Russian mafia would pick it up. At, uh, on this Andre, let's put it that way. We'd go, we would go to the banya, you know, the spa with the pool. And then we'd go and, and we'd go to all these places. And up at the, the meals, they picked up everything. You know, I, and I would meet a lot of the different people. And then there were a lot of Muslims that would come around us at times. Uh, from various places. One time, and I mentioned this, in the Mitsubishi Bank, you know, the one Arab wanted to get money cleared out of uh, the Mitsubishi Bank. Uh, where was it? Um, uh, you know, it was in the, uh, it was in dollars in the Mitsubishi Bank. And he, it was he from the UAE. He was from the UAE, I believe. My memory doesn't serve me as well. It, it could have been someplace else, but I think it was the UAE. And he had that they had a few billion dollars and they wanted to get out of the dollars and put it into euros or some other fashion. And they didn't want to tip off the Americans. Yeah. Yeah. I, can. I mean, there was a lot of that stuff. I mean, that was ongoing. That yeah. was ongoing. There was so much that was ongoing with the Russian mafia. So I'm making money. When we went out to Siberia, Siberia uh, was over a, uh, uh, the Kamchatki, the, the, the uh, king crab, and uh, and how they had control of that, and and the shipments would go. They would leave a uh, port from Kamchatka, and go and be bought offshore in America or Canada, places like that, and they'd be paying astronomical fees to the the Russian mafia. The the same with the caviar. You'd get the beluga caviar, or the kaluga. Excuse me, kaluga came from the Amur River. And it's very expensive. It's very similar to the beluga. And uh, they had control of that. So there was a lot of that that was ongoing. So, look, what would you say then? Okay. Having this experience with these different strains of organized crime, let's call them, what do you think was the difference between the Russian mafia and the Italian? I think so the Russian mafia is much smarter. They're much more intelligent. They're, they're more resourceful. They don't need it today. They have, it's like the Russians would say, at the outside, we may look European, inside we're Asian. And that what that would mean is they're, they won't come up with the decision right away. They want to wait and think about it. You know, and that's how they operated. It's the same with the arm smuggling. You, you had uh, 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 in, out of Belarus, uh, uh, you had Wesley Mahalchek, who was Polish, but he also had a place in Moscow and he had a place in uh, uh, Warsaw, Warsaw, and he had a place in uh, in Belarus that he lived at. And I entered the home of his partner, who was one of the biggest arms smugglers. And I, you know, I would go to his home for dinner when he wasn't there, 
I don't want to mention the name of the person that let me in, but we would have dinner in there. And of course, I was rifling through the files, things like that, that he had there. He didn't have much there because everything was in Malta, but he was operating uh, out of uh, uh, Belarus, Russia, and he still is big. He was big in the, the, the arms smuggling into various countries. At, uh, that's like Victor Butt at Moscow. Now, I think I met him. I'm not sure at a dinner table. He was the one that was arrested for the, you know, the smuggling arms. Uh, but I don't recall him. You know, I just remember the face. I don't remember talking about that with him, but I met a lot of them. And, you know, they would talk about arms smuggling and they would get it out. They were talking about diamond smuggling, jewelry, things like that. So let's, we're going to go, to, now I know, you know, in your extraordinary life, well, you've met a lot of people. Robert De Niro. Tell us about Robert De Niro. Actually, he's a very shy guy. You know, I, I disagree with him politically, but he's a friend. Let's put it that way. I disagree politically. I'm, I'm more of a moderate on everything than versus being up to left or right. Uh, but he's a nice guy. He's a friend. You know, he gets into his parts that, uh, you know, we discussed, you know, you know, our, <laughs> our people, he, he's a friend. He's a, he, he really is a nice guy, but he's gone through a hard time. He's a human being. He's gone through divorces. He's going, he's got children. He's, he's got other things, but he's, he's, he's basically a nice guy. Yes. He's done some unbelievable work. <laughs>